Hey, what's up, America and YouTube? Welcome to Mr. G's Weathercast. My name is Mr. G. I am a student meteorologist, and we are going to talk about that major storm that's taking place across the East Coast, the eastern half of the nation. Pretty much everywhere from Maine all the way down to Texas is dealing with this storm. So, in every state in between and over toward the the to the Atlantic is is dealing with this storm. This thing is this thing is bringing anything from heavy snow. It's got freezing rain, lots of ice and sleet. There are thunderstorms. There is also a tornado watching effect in the Gulf Coast. Uh, it's bringing some of everything. Tremendous amounts of snow, tremendous amounts of freezing rain, tremendous amounts of ice, everything. There's a lots of cold air behind it across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. It's getting hit with those freezing temperatures, whereas in the single digits across Minnesota, uh, below single, the single digits below zero, up to 10 below in the Dakotas, northern Minnesota. So it's a, this storm is affecting a good half of the nation in some form or another. Just because we're not getting precipitation here in the upper Midwest doesn't mean that it's not affecting our weather because it is, because it's pulling in that cold air. That cold air is really driving in and aiding in the development of that snow that's taking place down in the uh, Ohio Valley and the Mid-Mississippi Valley is where we're really seeing seeing that snow take place and that cold air injection into that is really aiding in the development of that snow so let's jump into our maps let's take a look at this map and this is our interactive radar and everything i love this map it does everything and right now as you can see you see a go what's going on across the uh this elongated trough here it's called an elongated trough there's a warm front in there and that warm front is responsible for all of this chaos that's going on and in that warm front there is an embedded trough of low pressure it's not a circular trough it's not a uh um it's not a counterclockwise circulating trough or uh, area of a closed slow it's called an open wave when it's like this. This is an open wave of low pressure. As you can see, this is where our tornado watch is down along the Gulf Coast, Alabama, Mississippi, West Florida. Uh, New Orleans is in that Gulf, in that watch area as well. And here is where our area of thunderstorms as well. This is general thunderstorms. Maybe a slight, slight risk of a severe thunderstorms, but there is a more moderate risk of severe weather and tornadoes in this area where the National Weather Service do have a tornado watch issue as well as a flood watch. And this is, is our winter storm warning in this area. And then we'll also see a winter weather advisory for these areas as that freezing rain and ice is going to start to run into the more western parts. <coughs> Excuse me, in the more western sections of Pennsylvania and it start to spread into West Virginia. But in the meantime, they're going to be dealing with that um, that rain and those thunderstorms that's coming up out of the Gulf. I don't expect to see any severe weather up here, but we do. We may hear a rumble of thunder in this area here. Could also see some rumbles of thunder in the snow. There could be some thunder snow, especially down around Texas. And Arkansas and Missouri could see uh, the possibility of thunder snow. So that is a look at that map, and let's jump let's jump into what the GFS model is showing right now. Hmm. And the GFS model is taking is showing us that big storm. So let's go to where we are today. This is currently where we're sitting. Here is that elongated trough is sitting across the eastern two thirds of the nation. And it extends from Maine, from Canada, basically all the way down to the Mexican border. We're seeing the effects where we're getting rain, thunderstorms through East Texas and the Houston area. New Orleans is going to see severe weather. Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, Mobile, Alabama, severe weather. Pensacola, Florida could see that 
severe weather with tornadoes possible, a tornado possible. I'm not saying there's going to be a tornado outbreak. I'm saying just be aware of the possibility of a tornado or two. Uh, more likely in this region here in northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, can see right in this area, can see that tornado as well as enhanced amounts of frozen precipitation, that freezing rain, that enhanced amount of sleet because of that risk of severe weather. And you will also be able to see that when we look at those maps, that in enhanced area of severe weather you can see that right in here you'll see that so that is where the GFS is so after we lose this weather system we move through pretty much a period of quiet quiet weather all the way until we get to what was that the 19th we get to the 19th we pretty much to the end of this model's run and then this guy shows up Boom. now this is the 19th this is what the GFS is saying is going to be uh, in this section of the country. Again, that Mid-South, the uh, Mid-Mississippi Valley, Ohio Valley, again, which has been the target of these big mid-latitude storms. It's been the repeated target because of that weather pattern that we've been in, that, we've been in, that, El, that La Nina pattern with that... Um, with that stuff, those storms coming from, the, let's go back to the end there. With those, no, oh, excuse me, with those storms coming, that pattern coming down from, um, you see that pattern we've been in where it's been that northwesterly flow to from the northwest around that western ridge to that eastern trough. With that, that trough of low pressure, it's been this kind of a pattern. This is the pattern that has been responsible for these ridiculous storms that we've been seeing across the nation. And this is why we've been seeing those ridiculous storms. This is that path that everything has been taking. It's been coming down like this and then turning this way. So this is where we've been. This is the pattern that the nation has been as far as the weather is concerned. So it's been like this, you know. Everything has been is he coming coming down off that or off of that ridge and or being going around that trough. So that's kind of what we've been as far as um, our weather pattern is con concerned. And as that air comes down off of that ridge and then gets it and it turns that trough, it spins up these mid latitude storms because it's taking this type of a turn. So it's spinning uh, it's spinning up. Those, it's encouraging the atmosphere to span. So that's why we're seeing these big mid-latitude storms form in this region or in this or anywhere in, anywhere in this area they've been forming and um, creating those big storms that have been rounding the base of the trough and heading off to the northeast. So that's kind of how it's been. That's how it's going to be for the foreseeable future. And I don't want this pattern going into March because it's going to stay cold up here in the upper Midwest, right? And it's not going to bring the snowstorms. The snowstorm helped the pattern that we need up here for snowstorms to come in Minnesota is flipped. We need the trough out west and a ridge in the east because that would bring up the Colorado lows and the Colorado low pressure centers, the Colorado base that will form right in this area. They go, oh, excuse me. Oh, whoa, going, we're going nuts here. We're going nuts. Map, map in distress, map in distress. <laughs> but what's gonna happen is that we're gonna develop those storms, those, those Colorado lows like to form in this region. And then they, after they form, they like to move they like to, they, uh oh, let's bring it back on my drawing here, okay? So, oh, uh, so after they form, and then they move like this, in this pattern. They either move this way, or they will move this way, and they will affect the upper great, the upper Midwest or the Great Lakes. So those Colorado lows, and they traditionally bring a lot of snow or or rain to this regions, 
but we're not seeing that pattern and maybe in March it'll switch to that pattern I hope so I really want it to change I don't I like that the fact that we've had an easy winter and all of our snows with the exception of one storm we've had one storm that dropped uh, a foot of snow but with the exception of that one storm we've had a pretty easy winter as far as precipitation is concerned and even the cold hasn't been as bad as it can be up here in the upper Midwest. It can be really bad for long stretches of time, but it's been very inconsistent, the cold. It's been a yo-yo. We've gone back and forth from the 30s to the 30s one day, and then the next day it's 5. Then we hit the 20s, then it's 2. And then it's just it's just ridiculous. It's just, it can't make up its mind on what kind of pattern it wants to stick with and stay in or but that's because of the Alberta Clippers. So the Alberta Clippers come down and they change the winds around to the north and northwest and they howl and, and they don't bring much precipitation. That's one of the reasons why you see wind. It, the a storm's energy translates in a couple different ways, either through lots of precipitation, lots of precipitation and wind, or lots of wind. In, in, or temperature, it really can affect the temperature. So that's what we got as far as the GFS is concerned. So with the exception of, the, of this weather system and our current weather system, that's all we have for the next two weeks. So let's take a look at what the European is showing for us. This is what the European model has in store for us across America. And the Euro, the Euro, let's see what the Euro has. And this is how the Euro is depicting this, st this storm. It's pretty consistent with what the GFS has. Of course, we're right in the middle of the event. If we're in the event and the models still aren't consistent, the only difference I really see in the models is that the Euro has a more predominant area. The, mo the Euro, I think, is doing a better job of showing that area right here. Remember on an earlier map, I showed you this area and it had that um, enhanced uh, freezing rain, enhanced sleet, uh, an enhanced area of severe weather potential, a severe thunderstorms, maybe a tornado right in here. This is where that area is, right in here. And the GFS is depicting that area of where it's a little bit more intense precipitation. So. And the Euro is pretty much in line with the GFS. And then you see how the Euro has this arch to it. It's not pointed. It's not, it's not, um, you see how it has this arch. It has this kind of a bend backwards to it. It's kind of like a hunchback right here. That is because of that high pressure out here, not allowing this system to progress east. So what it's doing is causing it to slide north. It's just sliding around. It's slithering around the backside, which is why the precipitation in this weather system is extended. Because instead of it moving, instead of this, um, instead of this moving this way, like this, instead of it just going like this, you know, instead of it going that direction, what it's doing is going this direction. Is going this direction is going with around that ridge of high pressure so everything is traveling toward the northeast that's why we're seeing that so that's one of the reasons why it's like that because of that strong that Bermuda high it's actually the Bermuda high which is a semi-permanent feature in that part of the northern hemisphere so you got see what's interesting you have the the polar vortex here right and you have the the u.s continental high that's typically here right so let's let's draw this out uh oh uh oh uh oh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh you got a map problem <laughs> so okay so let's draw this out here all right so you have a high pressure here okay my my terrible h all right high pressure then i'm gonna do it this is the far southern end and you want that to be in blue, okay? Let's change that to blue, all right? So then we have the polar vortex here, low, all right? And then we have, let's 
put it orange again. Uh, let's put it a uh, uh, let's make it yellow. All right, and then you have the Bermuda high that hangs out right here. So now you have the continental blocking high, the polar vortex, the Bermuda high of the. Uh, actually, this is wrong. I'm such an idiot. This should be. This actually should be a H, not an L. Duh. What am I doing? Okay. Really? <laughs> really? Do we need the meteorology one-on-one? So we got a big H here for the Bermuda High. The Bermuda High here, polar vortex here, continental blocking high here. The weather pattern has been uh, everything is coming on to the uh, we want to make this Y. This is where the per this is our pattern. Boom. That's our pattern right there. Okay? So that is where we where this is where we are. You see the continental blocking high is out here. The airflow current is coming. This is your jet stream. This has been the jet stream. The jet stream has been coming down rounding the base the base of their polar vortex because the polar vortex um the pattern around the polar vortex goes like this all right it goes this way boom there you go boom there's our polar vortex pattern right this right and the pattern around these high pressure areas is like this boom boom all right it's going this way right so here around this way boom boom this is one of the reasons why the storms have been so psychotic when they hit the northeast because when they hit the base of the trough here when they hit the bottom of the trough and they eject out up the east coast up to the gulf stream it's called the gulf stream when it hits that current that's why the Gulf Stream current is like that because the the air pattern kind of directs the Gulf Stream. A little bit of a science lesson for you here, meteorology 101 for you. And it goes boom, everything is boom, boom. In the storms race, they fly, boom. They really fly up the East Coast. And, um, and they really gather that strength and energy because they're getting that energy they get in that warm air, moist air. So that moist air is flowing around here. It's taking that tropical moist air, injecting it into whatever low pressure center is here, and it really intensifies. And then that cold air is coming down out of Canada into the backside of that low, that warm cold mixing together. Boom, nor'easter. It's the recipe for a nor'easter right there. So that is what the... Uh, Euro is painting for this crazy storm. Okay, this is the craziness. This is the craziness that we're dealing with. It's psychotic. So that was a bit of a science lesson for you right there. And um, let's take a look at our next map. Our next map is going to be the 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, it's a very similar map to what we. This is the. Um, this is what the. Um, what do you call it? The GEFS, the general, the G, this is the general uh, on the um, the global, not general, global ensemble forecast system. GEFS, this is what it has for us right now. This is um, the Bermuda High here, right? The polar vortex here, right? And this is that intercontinental blocking high over here the continental high the high mountain high <laughs> high mountain high I like that the mountain high right now it's kind of, it these things don't stay in their position they kind of move back and forth sometimes the Bermuda high is out over the central Atlantic sometimes the polar vortex is more over the polar areas over the Arctic sometimes this high is more right here over the the um, Utah and uh, is usually over Utah and um, Wyoming and Montana and Idaho is usually here in this region in the summertime it's here 
it then it becomes what we call the four corners high. But it's the same high pressure, but it just moves around because it has a lot to do with the sun angles. The sun position, the sun angle, the sun's angles and rays and heat from the sun helps to orientate these permanent weather features that are usually there, but depending on where the sun is in the angle, so as we move into spring and summer, this high is going to be down here. It's going to be more over the, um, it's going to come and center itself more over this region, where the other high pressure here is going to sit over this region. And this is what's going to generate the monsoon season because in the summertime that high pressure sitting right here that tropical moisture comes off of the Gulf of Mexico the Straits of Florida into the Gulf and across into the southwest and you get the summer monsoons that brings the, the thunder boomers to, my, to the mountains and deserts of Arizona Nevada and Southern California occasionally they reach Southern California. You know what's kind of depressing though is that when I was a kid, I loved to, I used to live in LA. And every summer, I can remember always having to look out over the mountains and you can see the thunderstorms, the cumulonimbus clouds over the deserts and mountains. You can see them from LA. And I used to, always that helped to foster my love for weather, was watching those, and it was so uncanny how those thunderstorms would, Every now and then, every now and then, those thunderstorms would move over L.A. They would kind of change. They would not be the towering cumulus. They would become more stratiform because they were high base. So the clouds would be different types of clouds, more of a fractal cumulus or, or more high elevated storms you would see. But sometimes L.A. would get affected by the mountain and desert thunderstorms would come in the afternoon or maybe at night. Especially if you lived in a more alien empire, if you lived in, you know, Riverside, San Bernardino, sometimes you would see, occasionally see an afternoon thunderstorm that would drift off of the mountains. And so you see that, that's what you'll get in the summer, so some more science for you. But of course, that's what the purpose of this video is. It's more of a, a long range and a science lesson. So, you meteorology 101, maybe that's what I should change the name of my channel to Meteorology 101. But anyway, that is what is projecting. This is what we're dealing with right now. So let's take a look at what, uh-oh, let's take a look at what the, um, the, um, what this is projected out for us. There's the Alberta Clipper that's going to come through on the 4th and the 5th. There is, this is what's going to help to nudge that weather system off the East Coast and move that high pressure because this is jet this has jet stream energy behind it so that ridge moves out west a, a little bit of a ridge builds in the east so we have a period of tranquil weather but while we're having that period of tranquil weather it is going to allow for that mid latitude storm that's going to develop on the 19th it's going to allow for that to take shape and there is there and here it, it kind of elongated. So this is why I have a feeling. This is why I believe that that 19th storm may not happen because this is the ensemble model, and I don't see that storm here on the 19th. Right? I don't see it in the 500 millibar, but it's there on the GFS on the deterministic model. It's on there, but I don't see it in the pattern here. Maybe right here. There's a there's a possibility of something to be positively tilted, maybe slightly a positively tilted trough or something like that. Maybe there's a maybe there's a slight trough here, it's, and it could it could orientate itself here right right here because anywhere you can see a dip or ripple in that uh, that pattern and that flow, then but that's possible. But but maybe we'll have to see. We'll have to let that get closer, but you know, the GFS likes to pay out stuff. It may not even be there in the next model run. Cause sometimes mistakes in the data can uh, could screw up a model. 
So you can have bad data and it can make your forecast model bad. So that's why it's not intended to be the weather forecast. It's just guidance is what they are. So let's jump on ahead into the next model. And this is a look at some of our snowfall totals that is to be ex expected from this storm system. And here is what we are looking at as far as our accumulated snowfall position. And this is where we will be by the 21 hundred hours on the the 21 Z on the um, on for tomorrow and this is how much snow that we can expect to see you see those 20 inches up by Maine the far tip of Maine 20 inches of snow possible and it falls off as you go further south as you get down to Texas this is little as six inches the Dallas area could be see as little six seven eight inches and it, 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 it increases because these areas is going to see less, a shorter period of frozen. Now, all of you are going to see a period of frozen precipitation. Well, if you get snow, that's frozen. That's considered frozen, too. But the sleet and freezing rain, you're going to all see it. But these areas is going to see more of it, especially right here. You see your snow totals really drop off in this region here. So that is a look at the um, the snowfall potential right there. This is what we've already seen as far as the snowfall is concerned. This is our snowfall that has already fallen. So this is a, our um, our snowfall accumulation. So um, as you can see, those this is not counting areas over here yet that has are, that is currently seeing snow. But this is snow that has already fallen in these regions, and this is the latest. This was done at 7 a.m. So as of 7 a.m., you can see a lot of 10 inch, 8 inches, 12 inch already, 12 inch snow totals in parts of um, northern Illinois and Indiana that saw quite a bit of snow. So let's jump into our freezing rain. This is our potential for freezing rain and how much freezing rain we could see out of this weather system and this is our freezing rain guidance right here and this is what it is showing for um, let's go out to the end of this system to where the fifth let's go out to the fifth because the fifth is when this system should be out of this area so this is the total amount of that the GFS is projecting that we're going to see as far as freezing rain is concerned and it's projecting an inch and a half in some locations especially right here in the ohio valley you can see as much as an inch the mid mississippi valley here can see really high totals an inch or more in a lot of i mean right in here southern indiana and northwestern kentucky inch and a half I, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes, man, the GFS. Are we gonna realize those that amount? We'll see. This is what it's projecting out to the fifth. It's possible. I mean, it's possible, but um, maybe we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> if it does, then good luck to those folks. But if it doesn't, thank God, you know. But that's a lot. That's a lot. This is a lot of this is a lot of damage this could cause. The freezing rain and the ice. The freezing rain is the most dangerous thing with the system. I, I honestly believe in the ice because the ice freezing rain sticks to the trees, so it can do damage to the trees and it can damage power lines and cause power outages. And snapping trees can snap power lines as well, and the power lines can snap just from the weight of the ice on the power line, so it'll cause power outages so let's take a look at the ice forecast how much ice could this storm drop and let's go down to the ice potential here and let me find the corresponding map here is our ice forecast this is the ice out to the fifth all right so as you can see this too could drop copious amounts of ice and is that showing me the oh let me close this maybe that's why it's not showing me the the there we go now we get uh now we're seeing uh 
almost an inch. Same region right here in the, uh, oh, excuse me, sleepy. In that, now this is uh, Ohio. A lot of Ohio could see that those ice totals approaching three quarters of an inch. So as much as three quarters of an inch of ice as possible, especially right in this region here. So that is a look at the ice. So the ice too is bad news, but I think the freezing rain is the worst part to me. So let's take a look at our convective outlook. This is what the National Weather Service, the Storm Prediction Center, has projected as for severe weather. This here is general thunderstorms here. This is a, a, a slight risk or uh, yeah, a marginal risk here. Marginal risk of severe thunderstorms and there's a slight risk here and that possibility Right now, there's a tornado watch issued for these areas right in here. So if you, we take, if we highlight this, um, this area right in here is where we could see, is where our tornado watch is. So that potential exists for that severe, for that type of severe weather. I mean, this is all considered severe weather, but this is, for this type of severe weather is what we're looking at. And this is expected to move shift east into more of Georgia and North Florida tomorrow. So that's a look at what that looks like for. So let's take a look at what our temperatures are. So our temperatures, if you look at our temperature map, you can see exactly where our storm is. If you take a look at Let's take a look at today. Here we go. Here's where we currently are. And if you look at today's map, you see where that storm is. You look at the temperature difference right here. How sharp that cutoff is. See those 70s? It's almost 80s in Georgia. Almost 80, some 80s in South Florida. Central Florida. Central Florida here is warmer than South Florida. Than Miami. You look at the 82 in Naples. Or Fort Myers. You see 83 in Tampa. Uh, he, Jacksonville has an 80. See these upper 70s? This is fueling those severe thunderstorms. That's why there's a tornado watch for this area. The reason why for that tornado watch is these juicy, huge, this is a lot, of, a lot of moisture in this air. And there's strong weather so for frontal system of warm front right here. I mean, this is a recipe for severe weather. Uh, I'm surprised there's not more of an outbreak. A lot of it is because there's that elongated trough. That elongated trough that's here. So why the reason? Oh, the reason why is 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 right in here. Is that elongated trough? Because you don't have a, a rotating low pressure center. For the most part, you just have this trough. And it's that lack of dynamics as to why there's not a predominance of severe weather, why there's not more severe weather, right? There is a secondary area of low pressure right here that is going to enhance some of the precipitation totals right in this region. So we got an enhancement of precipitation because of a little surface low pressure a surface trough of low pressure right in that region so so that is and then you see that bitterly cold here air here in the upper midwest as usual where it typically is in minnesota that's why you're seeing that so let's take a look at what it is tomorrow tomorrow the storm system progresses east, takes that warm air with it pushes east pour more port toward the coast it's why tomorrow i think in these regions we're going to see that severe weather expand over the here. That tornado watch and that potential for thunderstorms. And this is what we're going to see for on your Saturday. That system has moved offshore by Saturday. Now we have that cold air shift into the east, right? It does modify a little bit as it shifts east. Not as what well, is not going to be as cold here as it was here. And then you see that warm temperatures are pushed all the way to Central and South Florida. As things turn a little bit more mild, a little bit cooler across the Southeast. 
Let's take a look at your Monday temperatures. See, if you look at the temperatures, it too will tell you what's going on across the weather. With the weather, you see that it starts to warm, starting to warm back up now across the southeast. And um, the bitter cold continues across the upper Midwest, right? It modifies a little bit more in the Great Lakes because you have the lakes there. The lakes provide a little bit of warmth to these areas. And you see the upper... The northeast starts to modify, warms up again because they, they get that influence off of the Gulf Stream. That Gulf Stream uh, current that runs along, that Gulf Stream current runs along right in here. So you see the Gulf Stream right there. That's where the, this is where the Gulf Stream is, which is a current of warmer air. Transfer, it transports warmer air. This is why you can see storms like Superstorm Sandy that hit the up that hit the uh, northeast because of the Gulf Stream. A lot of the hurricanes take that that path because of the Bermuda High. The Bermuda High helps to fuel the Gulf Stream along with whatever uh, mid latitude weather system is on the east coast of the United States. So that's a look at what the temperatures are. That's, I got a quick video if you still streaming. So this is live feed from one of the guys. I'm not sure who the driver is for this one. A storm chasing video, which is a really popular YouTube channel that covers uh, severe weather. These guys are storm chasers and they go out and cover the effects of all types of severe weather and provide live feeds and Take, they show video of the traffic collisions and the people spinning off the road and the other impacts of severe weather. So shout out to those guys who do a wonderful job of driving around. Right now, he's this gentleman is in southeastern Missouri and western Tennessee right now. So that is a look at that major winter storm as well as what's going on maybe in some of the long range as we can see, after this storm, there's going to be a period of tranquil weather across the nation, with a parade of the usual Alberta Clippers in the upper great in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. We're going to see that continue. Uh, another powerful mid-latitude storm could form around the 19th, according to the GFS. But let's take that with a grain of sand. Let's not worry. Let's table that for now. And we'll revisit it as it gets closer. If it stays in the models until all the way through now, I doubt it's going to stay in the next model. The ne the new it may stay in the next model run, but the next few runs after that, I doubt it's going to stay there. And I doubt that this entire period is going to be that quiet from now until the 19th, almost two weeks. So we'll see. We're going to have two weeks of really nothing to talk about in the weather. Maybe other than the cold in the upper Midwest, it'll be the temperatures, it'll be the news across the nation. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for uh, watching this uh, program. If you made it all the way through, if I wasn't too technical or too boring, but this channel is for weather enthusiasts. If you're just a, a casual, oh, I just want to know if it's going to rain today kind of person, maybe this channel may not be for you. You are welcome to watch and learn and learn because I am here to teach this is an educational channel um, so um, that's that but I do want to thank you for watching this video if you like this if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you want to see more videos as I post hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for you so you can be notified when I post my next video so I want to take a moment to let you like the video and let you subscribe. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next video.